Let's mount up. Hey, it's Ron from Restless Hollow, and in this video I'm going to show you how I made a new compact RCA power box. So this is the original RCA power box that I've made. Uh, I believe I made it about six years ago, and I've been using it uh, often since, and it works really well. Um, but I set out to make a more compact version. Um, one reason is these jacks were sold through Radio Shack, uh, I think exclusively. Um, so now you can't get them anymore. So I was looking in for an alternative to that. And also I wanted something smaller because I would like to have a power supply box that I can fit inside my weatherproof enclosures. So I came up with this. You can see the uh, size difference here. It's a lot smaller. Now granted this one has half the amount of inputs, but I plan to use more of these um, around the haunt. So let me show you how I made it. So I went looking for another option for these RCA jack boards and I found this. Um, I found this on eBay and these are great. These are designed to be mounted onto a circuit board. Um, same kind of same kind of deal here. Um, if you're looking for these, if you type in PCB RCA jack board, you should find them um, on eBay and I believe you can get them on Amazon too possibly. Um, and this works out really well uh, for what I want to do. For this project, I'm using strip board, which is a prototyping board for making circuits. On the back are copper strips that run on a line in each row. Uh, so each row is completely connected. You can use this to create different types of circuits. Uh, for example, I use them for the target boards uh, on our shooting gallery. So the first step is to cut out a smaller piece, as this is much bigger than I need. Now you want to take your components and line them up on the board to figure out the size. I took the DC power jack and the RCA jack board and placed them on the strip board to see how large I needed to size the board. Then I marked it with a pen to show where to cut it. To cut the board we are going to use a utility knife and a metal ruler. You can see the score line there, which is where we will snap the board. Sometimes it can be a little tough to get it to snap. You can do additional scoring if necessary to help. And here we have the perfect sized board for our project. Now I'm going to take the DZ jack and connect it to the strip board. On this jack, the pin on the back is positive and the center pin is negative. On the RCA jack board, these pins are positive and these three pins here are negative. So when you insert these into the board, make sure that the positive and negative pins match up to the correct row. It's a little tricky to get everything lined up properly and pushed into the holes. Here you can see I got the positive pins all on this strip, which lines up with the positive power supply, and the negative pins on the back strip, and they all line up with the negative power supply pin. Next, you'll need to solder the components to the board. And there you go. Now all of the positive leads are connected as well as the negative leads. So now I can take my DC power and plug it in. I've got this RCA plug which is hooked up to a pumpkin light and I can plug that in and we have power. To house this I designed and printed an enclosure. Uh, if you don't have a 3D printer you could accomplish the same thing uh, with a project box. Um, you would just need to drill out some holes here for the jacks. Uh, might be a, a little bit tricky, uh, but I'm sure you could figure it out. 
Uh, in my case, I was able to design a, a box that was exactly the right size that I wanted. Uh, I just took some measurements with my caliper um, and I left a space for an LED here. And then on the inside, I have risers that come up with uh, heat set inserts. Uh, these are little brass heat set inserts and they work really well with 3D printed parts because um, you basically just set them in there and they're nice and secure and then you can uh, have a screw that goes into those guys. And it's great because you can take things apart and put it back together multiple times and it won't wear out. Um, and then on the back is a opening for the DC jack. All right, so here's what it looks like inside the enclosure, the top of the enclosure. Um, I added an LED here uh, just to serve as a status LED. That way I know that the box is getting power if I'm trying to troubleshoot something. Uh, this is just a red LED uh, that I wired into the positive and negative uh, circuit side of the circuit here. And I did add a resistor here to make sure um, that it did not blow out the LED. Uh, anytime you're working with um, power, you need to lower the current um, for the LED. So you can look up the specs for whatever LED you're using and then find out what type of resistor you need. Um, and this one is 12 volts, so I use that uh, for my power to determine what I needed. Uh, so that LED just comes through the front there and it will light up red uh, when, it's time, when it's getting power, so I know. And then the back just slides on like this. Attaches like that, and the um, DC power jack comes out the back there. Then on the front, there are two screw holes to hold it together. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I will do my best to answer. Uh, if you're new here and are not a subscriber, uh, feel free to go ahead and click that subscribe button. See you next time.